the question is histopathological picture of chronic gingivitis is okay usually the most common presentation that a patient will come to you with when you have to uh, when he complains of bleeding gums is basically a stage of chronic inflammation the most common condition or the most common complaint of or the most common presentation of a patient with some form of bleeding gums is always going to be chronic Gingiva, chronic inflammation because the gingiva is always in a state of inflammation. There is microorganisms that are always present within the gingival sulcus, and this these microorganisms are going to always irritate the gingival tissues, and the gingival host cells are going to be combating these microorganisms in order to produce the immunity as well as constantly ward off the bacteria. That is why there is a call on there is always a state of inflammation in the gingiva. And over time, and since this is going to be present over a long period of time, it is always chronic gingival inflammation, okay, or chronic gingivitis. Now, as we know, acute inflammation and chronic inflammation are the two types of inflammation, okay. In acute inflammation, the most important cells are your polymorphonucleus cells, that is your neutrophils. So, these neutrophils are going to be the first cells that are going to ward off whatever irritating substance is present. Whereas in chronic inflammation, you have all the cells of chronic inflammation, that is your macrophages, plasma cells, lymphocytes and monocytes. These are all cells of chronic inflammation. So, as we already have seen from this, the chronic inflammation, if the gingiva is going to be in a state of chronic inflammation, as you can see in this histopathological picture, you can very clearly see that there are multiple cells with nuclei, with a single round nucleus that has been occupying the entire sub epithelial layer. So, this zone is basically your zone of inflammation, and all the cells are primarily not multi lobed like your PMNs, but they are primarily unilobed or rather they have a single nucleus. So, that means all these cells are chronic inflammatory cells. The cells which are of this type are your lymphocytes and monocytes. So, for sure, in a state, in a patient who is going to be having chronic inflammation, you are going to have lymphocytes. Now, in addition to that, when you have a patient who has come to you with chronic gingivitis, you will also notice that the gingivitis is over a period of time. Like I had mentioned, the, that is going to be the most common presentation. So, with time what happens is, that is stage 4, with time what happens is, a lot of these, stage 3 and stage 4, sorry, a lot of these uh, lymphocytes, they differentiate. They differentiate further into plasma cells so that there are more antibodies that are produced and these antibodies are going to be providing some form of immunity against the microorganisms and the toxins that they release. So, that is the reason why you have plasma cells as well as lymphocytes in chronic inflammation or in chronic gingivitis. However, if you actually take another section and you will always see that there is some amount of PMNs, that is neutrophils that are going to be present in the chronic gingivitis cases. Why? Because they are the first cells of acute inflammation and since there is going to be a constant irritation over a period of time, there would be phases when there would be no irritation and again the irritation will start. So, when there is a phase of new irritation, again the uh, neutrophils go and recruit themselves over there and there will be inflammation. So, that is the reason when you have a chronic gingivitis case, you will see all the three types of cells that is neutrophils, lymphocytes as well as plasma cells and that is why 4 is the answer to the question over here.